Hello, welcome or welcome back. Uh, if you don't know who I am, my name is Paloma and I am a full-time artist. It's been a very long time since I've done a video like this where I just sit down and talk to the camera, so I'm glad to be doing it again. But as you can tell by today's title, I am going to be talking about how you can develop your own personal artistic style. Now, I feel like I am fairly qualified to talk about this topic. I have been creating art since I was very little, but I started taking it seriously my freshman year of college, so that is now four years ago, and I started my digital art journey about three years ago. So I have been learning along the way, and I have been working really hard to hone my skills and improve and such. I have experimented with so many different artistic styles, some that feel much more me than others, but I hope that I am able to help you out with these tips that I give you. And of course, I have to give a little bit of a disclaimer beforehand, but there is no way for you to develop your artistic style overnight or extremely quickly. This process, I feel like, never really stops um, and it develops throughout an artist's life based on your experiences and all that stuff, but I'm just gonna give you some tips on how you can get started and kind of get yourself on track to developing your art a little bit more and practicing and all that, so yeah. The first step is obviously practice. You don't have to be the most amazing realist artist in the world, but I do think that getting familiar with drawing things from real life is going to help you create a more stylized look in the long run. Um, if you are interested in doing digital art, I still recommend you practice traditional and digital art on whatever device you're going to be using because the two are very different, but in my experience, having that traditional skill is still really important. Now, if you're a more advanced artist and you know, you've already been doing traditional media for a long time, then, you know, maybe only practicing digital art is best for you. But if you are starting from zero, I definitely, definitely suggest uh, practicing a ton on traditional and then kind of moving into digital because there's nothing like using a pencil on a piece of paper. It's just, I feel in my experience, in my artistic journey, I developed my skills a lot faster in traditional versus in digital and digital Digital art is a whole new world and in my opinion, again in my journey, uh, it was a lot more difficult and a lot slower to develop my skills digitally. So practice, practice, practice. I know it's slow and it seems like you're not improving, but then even if you draw like a little bit every day for like a month, if you look back at the beginning of the month, you're gonna see at least a little bit of a difference and the more you draw, the more you're gonna develop your artistic style. That's just how it is. Next important, important step is to find multiple, multiple sources of inspiration. Uh, it's never good to have just one or two or three sources of inspiration because that's where we kind of tend to get a little bit derivative with the art that we're creating. So I always try to accumulate tons and tons of sources of inspiration. The internet obviously a lot of us have access to it and it is amazing. It gives us access to so many different images and other artists and stuff like that. So obviously the internet is a great source, especially Instagram and Pinterest because they're image-based sites. So we can see a ton of art. Uh, and especially like on Pinterest, we can look at uh, like real pictures, like landscapes, food, stuff like that that can give us inspiration. But personally for me, I've found that the most valuable inspiration and the one that makes me feel the fullest and most ready to create is inspiration in the real world and tangible inspiration. So personally, where I find real world inspiration the most is bookstores or libraries and uh, vintage stores, just because that's what I'm most inspired by. There's also uh, museums, gardens, restaurants even, if you're like super into food or there might be like a lot of people sitting around and you can really study their faces. But real life inspiration, there's nothing like it. It is so valuable and it's so unique to you as well because nobody else is experiencing what you are seeing in the way that you're seeing it, except for you versus an image on Instagram um, many people can be seeing it. Uh, so yeah, you know, if you're able to, 
get out there and experience stuff, go to places that you really enjoy, and all of that really really contributes to your creative voice and your creative energy as well, you know? I feel like as artists, when we create things, we're kind of giving away a little bit of a piece of ourselves, so it's important to always fill ourselves back up with inspiration and other stuff that we really love so we can keep creating and putting stuff out there. Now, this being said, kind of going off of my second point, be a curator of your taste, if that makes sense. So uh, I'm gonna cite the TikToker that I saw make a TikTok about this, but they are completely right. They touched on the fact that your art style and your art in general is just a, cur a curation of all your different tastes meshed into one and that is what makes it unique and that is what makes it you and when i saw it i was like he is so right i draw stuff that i love or that i want or i saw something in a movie and i really love the scene so i want to do like a recreation of it discover what you really love outside of just like drawing and painting or other artists you know movies that you love shows that you love food that you love um just any you know, kind of going off of finding inspiration in real life, find your passions and your interests and your taste, and that will easily make your art shine and feel very personal to yourself. My next tip that I have, which is very important, and I think especially more important with digital art, but it is playing and experimenting with color. Color palettes, I feel like while they are not technically owned by anyone, like you can't own a color, um, I think color palettes are definitely all very unique to each artist and at least for myself, I have a very close relationship with color and close relationship with the color that I use in my art. I think it was the most difficult part of kind of finding my own artistic voice is deciding what color palette and colors I really enjoyed. I've experimented with so much color um, and I think it's important to do so because that's how you discover what you really love and what you really don't like and what you feel like speaks more to you as an artist versus what doesn't. I have always loved my art more when I gravitate more towards really warm colors and even if I use a green or a blue or a purple it has to be like a very warm toned purple, green, or blue, and it feels a lot more me versus stuff that is more cool toned. It doesn't feel very me at all, and there was a certain point of time where I experimented a lot with cool colors, and I needed to do that, and I enjoyed it the time that I did it, but now looking back, I, I completely do not identify with a cool color palette at all. I think it's super important. Um, in traditional, I feel like it's a little bit easier to experiment with color just because you don't have an infinite amount of options and maybe if you have recently started getting into digital art or if you remember the beginning of your digital art journey, looking at the infinite number of colors that you can choose from in digital art can be really overwhelming and leave you not knowing what color to choose because it really is overwhelming. Uh, so I think getting started traditionally might be an easier route. So, you know, just picking out just random, even like crayons, color pencils, markers that you really like and experimenting with those. And then you can even like take a picture and import it to whatever digital software you're using and color pick the colors and then kind of adjust them. Look more of the saturation or brightness that you want but experiment, experiment with colors. Um, some A tool that I really love to use, which Procreate has a really great way to use this, but uh, I'm pretty sure that any digital art software, you can color pick colors off of pictures as well, but downloading real life photographs uh, where you really enjoy the colors or the, the tone of the picture, and you can upload it onto Procreate, and Procreate will actually make a color palette based on that picture and it, again like I said if you're using a different digital software uh, you can just color pick colors but I think that option on Procreate is absolutely amazing because sometimes you just look at a photograph of like a landscape or I don't know like flowers or something and you're like I don't know what it is about this I don't know what specific color it is but I really really love the just like the vibe or the 
color palette of this picture and so I think that's a, also another really great way to get started so you, again you're not as overwhelmed with like the idea that you have an infinite amount of colors because I know I definitely was overwhelmed by that. My next tip again is kind of like half of my past tip but familiarize yourself with color theory. So I'm not saying you have to be an absolute expert at color theory but if you're starting from scratch uh, I do think that you should just learn the absolute basics of color theory so like the primary colors, the secondary colors, and then complementary colors, triadic, and you know all the different color schemes. Just a very basic knowledge so you can just know how color works and it'll help you make color choices um, because I feel like, and you know again maybe you can relate, I know this was definitely me, but I feel like when I first started digital art I would choose my colors from a very, I'm not sure what the word is, but from like a very, I guess, elementary viewpoint because I feel like a lot of us learn about color in elementary school and then, you know, if we never take an art class again, we're never, we don't really think much about it anymore. And our eye for color is definitely something that we have to train and develop. So when we think of green, we think of like the classic cartoon grass green, but in reality, maybe that's not, it, that's not what's going to look the best in your art piece. So, you know, just kind of basic knowledge of color theory, I highly recommend. I will link some videos down below that I think are good at explaining color theory and make it really easy to know. Now, I'm not saying that what every single time that I do an artistic piece, I am using color theory and I'm like calculating in my brain. Uh, because like I said, you will develop and train your eye to just know what colors to pick. Uh, that does take a little while, but again, knowing basic color theory I think will really help with color choices and getting yourself used to knowing which colors to pick. Now we are going to get into a little bit more specific tips on how to find your style, and these are just ones that I feel like really helped me. So the first one is gonna be finding stuff that you enjoy drawing or stuff that you enjoy in general. So this kind of goes back to developing your interests and stuff that you're passionate about. So for example, I really like drawing cats. I really like cats in real life. So I enjoy drawing cats and flowers and what's another thing? Um, maybe you really enjoy drawing frogs, but you want to find what you really like drawing and draw those things over and over and over and over again because slowly you're gonna start getting used to drawing it and you're gonna start noticing your artistic mark in each one if that makes sense so like whenever I draw something for the first time maybe because I'm not super confident because I've never drawn it before or maybe I the first few times I get too caught up in like the realism of it and making it look like I don't know, I'm drawing a car for the first time and I'm too focused on making it look like a car. But once you start drawing something over and over and over again, you start getting more confident and you know what to expect when you're drawing it. And then you kind of start developing a little bit more of your style with that item. So there are definitely, I think, things that I draw that show my artistic style more than other things. But yeah, it's kind of like pick stuff that you like drawing and draw it a bunch of times and then it's gonna eventually become unique to you. Next thing is draw fan art. Now I feel like this is, this, this topic has mixed opinions. I think if we only draw fan art then it isn't really good for our for developing our artistic style because we might get stuck in drawing you know I'm sure that all of us have gone through this but like middle school and even into high school I got really stuck drawing anime style stuff it took me a very long time to stop drawing manga eyes and not that I didn't like it but like it became impossible for me to draw anything outside of that so you don't want to draw exclusively fan art all the time but you know, look at a video game that you like, uh, an animated movie that you like, an anime series that you like, and kind of experiment, redraw stuff uh, from those things, and kind of see, try to see what you like about it. I think recreating things is a wonderful way to find your artistic style. Um, now, of course, you don't want to like redraw 
um, Naruto and be like, this is my original character, I drew this. But like just kind of recreating fan art, I feel like really helped me develop my style. And now I don't even draw fan art and I want to. Like sometimes I'm like, oh, I really, I think that's so cute. Like I really want to draw it in my style, but I just don't even gravitate towards drawing fan art anymore because I feel like I've developed my artistic voice so much. Um, but I think it's, it really helped me out. I loved drawing Animal Crossing. I loved drawing Studio Ghibli. I even got into drawing like anime characters in my style. And I think it really did help me like find my voice and discover what I like and what I don't like. Now going off of that tip is recreate stuff from other artists. Now in this instance, you definitely do not want to post stuff that you recreate from the artist unless they have explicitly said that it's okay um, but doing it in your sketchbook no one is going to come to your house and bring your sketchbook because you recreated it in there again you don't want to take credit for it or you know boast it online and saying that it's yours but i don't think there's anything wrong in trying to recreate an artist's art to see what you like about it. And then you can kind of like experiment with that and change it up a little bit. But I think learning from people that have higher skill than you as well is awesome. You know, I always tell people, in my opinion, like I don't even care if your art is heavily inspired by mine. You know, just be respectful, blah, blah, blah. But find some artist style that you really love and try to recreate some of their pieces in your sketchbook and just kind of be like, you know what, I actually prefer it this way, or I would have done this artistic choice differently, or whatever. I think it's great to learn from other artists. Now my last one is something that I've been doing more recently, um, and that I feel like has helped me make my artistic voice a little bit more distinct, and that is experimenting with proportions. Um, and this specifically I feel like makes a bigger difference in animals or people, but um, especially if you want to develop a more illustrative style, experimenting with proportions is really going to make you stand out and give you a unique artistic voice. So for example, I will use the example of cats again. You can make a kitty's head really big and make his legs really tiny, or you can make his eyes really big or really small. You can make his ears really big, really small. His body can be huge. His body can be tiny with really long legs. So experiment with, with proportions, like even stuff that you think is really crazy and wild. You can be like, you know what, with this next face that I'm gonna draw, I'm just gonna do like a really big nose and like a re really small lips and really big eyes or something. And I think it'll, I mean, it's definitely helped me discover ways that I like to draw stuff and ways that I can make myself stand out a little bit more and that feels a little bit more uniquely me. Now, this is my last tip. I promise I have been talking so much, um, but the last one is gonna be experiment with different media traditionally. If you are interested in doing traditional art, but even then I think it really helps uh, with digital art as well because I've found that the best digital art that I personally make is when I take techniques that I would have used in traditional art and taken it to digital if that makes sense. So just try out different media, inks, painting, um, markers, stuff like that. And I feel like that's going to help you learn to create a more organic digital art style if that makes sense. Uh, I think I, I mean this is kind of like touching on what I said in the beginning but I think traditional and digital, at least for me personally, um, developing them really goes hand in hand. Now, I have seen artists that exclusively do digital art and they're absolutely amazing, they're absolute masters, um, but I think they are much more above my skill level. But I think when you're developing your skills, artistic skills in general and artistic style, it is pretty important to experiment with both. So those are my tips on how you can develop your artistic style. You know, I feel like words that I used a lot throughout this video is practice and experiment, but it's true. I think practicing and experimenting is the best and fastest way to develop your artistic style. I know it gets frustrating. I used to get really frustrated feeling like I couldn't identify with my art and I felt like I couldn't stand out enough, but I promise you it's worth it and it will pay off and it never stops like i said i feel like i'm still kind of developing and 
forming my own artistic voice. But yeah, I hope that helps. Um, as I said, I'm going to link some resources down below that I hope can help you out. Color palette resources, tutorials, stuff like that. And yeah, if you are interested in seeing more from me, if you've never seen me before, you can subscribe. <laughs> subscribe I normally post studio vlogs just like talking about my work process and stuff like that um, I post art on my Instagram I have a store where I sell stuff like art merch and such sometimes original artwork and stuff I have my patreon um, where we have a lovely lovely community where I also send out physical rewards to like monthly stickers and stuff if you're interested in that but yeah, if you made it to the end of the video, thank you. I very much appreciate you. And I will catch you guys in the next one.